Welcome back. Every night at this time, the great debate. Tonight's premise, President Obama undercut the military in his speech to the Muslim world. And with us to argue that point, the man who came right out and said it, Mark Thiessen, who is chief speechwriter for President Bush. Also with the CNN uh, international correspondent, Michael Ware, who was in Iraq for much of the war. We also want your opinion, so vote by calling the number on the bottom of your screen. First, we're going to have an opening statement from each of you. 30 seconds on the clock. You'll hear a bell at the end of 30 seconds. Mark, the premise again, Obama's words undercut the military. Make your case. Well, certainly what he did was he used uh, throughout the speech shameful moral equivalents. He said uh, that the Iranian Revolution was bad, but the overthrow of Mossadegh was bad also. The Holocaust was bad, but the, uh, but the use of, uh, but, the, uh, but the occupation of Palestine is bad also. And then he turned to our military and he said, let me read you what he said. He said, just as America can never tolerate violence by extremists, we must never alter our principles. 9-11 led us to act contrary to our principles. That is a mo drawing moral equivalence between the men and women of our military and our intelligence community who stop acts of violence and the men and women who commit acts of violence. Michael? Well, I, I listened to Mark and, I, and I've read his pieces and, you know, without hearing more, it's difficult for me to shake the feeling that, that what's being said here is a gross disservice to the US military and to the US intelligence community. I'm not sure that the military or intelligence communities would feel under attack. I mean, I don't know about the view from the Pentagon and the White House, but having spent far too much time in the foxholes with the American troops being shot at, I think they need less of platitudes in a speech in Cairo than of a strategic speech that tries to stop angry Muslims shooting at them in the first place. I think that we're really arguing a I vacant a point. Uh, all right, Mark, I'll let you respond to that. Go ahead. Well, sir, I mean, it's just clear what he said. He stood on foreign soil in, an, in front of an Arab audience in a foreign land and said that the men and women of our intelligence community had committed torture. He said that, that he was closing Guantanamo Bay without making any defense whatsoever of the good men and women who run that facility, who got vital intelligence to protect the American people, and did not commit abuse, did not commit torture. In fact, Eric Holder, went, when he gave a speech in Berlin, uh, said that they were professional and that they tr treat detainees humanely. Just a single sentence defending them uh, would, it would have been sufficient, but he threw them under the bus in order to curry favor with a, with a Muslim audience. Michael, did, should there have been some acknowledgement of, of, of American troops and what they've done in the speech somewhere? Well, I think that's implicit throughout, you know, all of this discourse, and I would, I would argue that President Obama in Cairo was not giving a Republican candidate stump speech on the campaign trail. I mean, one needs to be aware of one's audience. Now, the Arab Muslim world has its own first-hand appreciation of the U.S. military and intelligence community. Indeed, it's its sons who are in Guantanamo, for better or for worse. And Guantanamo exists in its own right, and I don't think we need to defend the merits of that here. Paying lip service to the troops who have been serving there honorably anyway, to the grunts who are in the field bleeding and sweating, I don't think it's going to play in a, in a Muslim audience. I don't think that's what they were there to hear. And I don't think the troops in the field or at Guantanamo need to be treated like such needy children that they need someone to stroke their mm -hmm. hand in every this is speech. Not about Let's them stop like the Arabs children. attacking them could in I, the first place. Could I place. say something? Go ahead. I think that's Mark. more important, Mark. It's not about needy, needy children or uh, that kind of, kind of condescending attitude for, uh, from Michael. I think that's a terrible thing to say, to say about them. He well, went out and affirmatively said that they had committed torture, that Guantanamo was contrary to our ideals. So he, it's not that he didn't praise them, though he should have praised them. Well, let's, it's that, that he attacked them. And I he criticized them. Hold on, hold on. You said some things. Now let me say something in response. Sure, go for the it, United man. States military, what he should have said in his speech, and it sh uh, certainly it shouldn't be just a Republican that would say this, Michael. Any Republicans and Democrats should both agree that from Iraq to Afghanistan to Kosovo to Bosnia to, uh, to the first Gulf War, the United States military has done more to liberate Muslims and Arabs from oppression and tyranny and genocide than any force in human history. Yeah, and I, to see throw them point, under the bus I see that, that way, point in your article, but the yeah. problem is you're not talking to a Veterans of Foreign Wars evening dinner. You're talking to the Arab or the Muslim world. And yes. to be honest, they don't feel terribly liberated by the U.S. military. Now, well, you that's and why I the may president have has a responsibility to say something. You and I may have our view of that. But when there's American tanks sitting in the Arab streets, when they see the killings in Afghanistan from our bombings, though they're not intended, that's not the, how they feel. When they the see what happened in Abu Ghraib, you've got to understand, Mark. 
I mean, it might feel different in the ivory towers and Capitol Hill and, and the Pentagon. Excuse me, I've been to Iraq street, and Afghanistan four times in each of those street. countries, so I know what it's like in the Arab oh, Street. Sorry. I've been there. You spent how much time in Iraq? Oh, listen. So, no, no, no. How the, much time, Mark? I've, I've how traveled. How much time, Mark? Oh, oh I know you live there. I've right, fine, I lived there for but, six but, years, right? Good, congratulations. I know the problem that President Obama is trying to address. And I can yes. tell you, I've spent more time in the trenches with your troops than I can guarantee you have. And I'm speaking for in, your soldiers. Michael, and I'm let me tell you something. They let don't need you. platitudes. Can I, they can I say need something? a solution. I was. I was under fire too. I was in the Pentagon on September 11, 2001, with our troops. So don't tell me about being under fire with the yes, troops. Mark, and I let me tell you something. Who the was point there that is, day, but the you're point about is, the Arab excuse me, street, Mark. Uh, come is on, this your mate. show? Can I get? Can I set a word? All right, hold on, Michael. Let's let, let Mark real, make Mark. his point. Let Mark make his point. Go ahead, Mark. The, the, the point is, it's not that they have to be praised because of, for praise's sake. Is that he criticized them? He attacked them in a foreign land. The president of the United States does not go to a foreign country, and particularly to an Arab audience, where Al Qaeda this propaganda is echoing the things that you were saying just a moment ago about how we do all these terrible things and feed into that propaganda. That is a shameful thing for the commander listen, in chief listen, listen, of the United Mark, States. I, take, I understand finish. what you're, I they, understand what you're saying. It is a shameful thing for the commander in chief of the United States Armed Forces to do to the men and women under his command. He's not a left-wing senator from Illinois anymore. He is the president of the United States, and I, he has responsibilities to the men and women under his command. Okay. Mark, I think you protest too much. I don't think that your boys and girls in uniform would feel as aggrieved as you do. They're not and boys as and you girls. Said, they are as heroes. You said, they are as heroes, you said, Michael. Some point They're not right. boys and girls. Guys. The president doesn't admit his shortcomings <coughs> on foreign soil. Let me well, hold on a second. We're, 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 we're treading the same ground here. Let me just ask for clarification, if I can, um, from Mark. Because, sure. Mark, I, I, is, is it, isn't President Obama attacking not the military or the troops necessarily, but but the policies of the former president and the decisions he made and President Bush. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's directed at the people who were doing their jobs in terms of carrying out those policies. It, is know, that a fair assessment? I don't think so, no, because he's, the, the people who carried out those policies, who could, uh, the policies were not to torture and not to commit abuse, and the, the people who carried them out followed the policies and did not commit abuses. There was numerous reports that, were do that have been done on this. And, you know, Eric Holder, a month ago, Eric Holder went to Berlin and gave a speech on, uh, on, uh, on Guantanamo. And in that speech, before he said they were closing Guantanamo, he said, I went to Guantanamo, I reviewed the place, it is, it is, it is run professionally, it is run ethically, and the detainees are treated humanely, but it's become a symbol and so we're going to close it. Right. All the president had to do was say that these people do the right thing before he started talking about th closing Guantanamo and throwing them under the bus in a foreign audience. Michael, very quickly. Mark, I think you're being far too precious. I mean, the, the, points, the points taken. Under the Bush administration, there was legal authority given for what was done. Now, we can call that extreme interrogations, you can call that waterboarding, you can call that torture. That's splitting a hair. I don't think at any point there was a question about the honorable service of the troops or not all right and to throw this up now just seems like cheap okay guys you know, point, uh, political points we're, we're gonna take a quick break but we're gonna do as we do every single night we ask mm -hmm. our, our debaters to find common ground I know you've got it in you we're gonna take a break and give you the commercial to think about it when we come back they're gonna find common ground stay with us Welcome back to our great debate. Tonight's premise, President Obama undercut the military in his speech to the Muslim world. Former Bush speechwriter Mark Thiessen thinks so. CNN International correspondent Michael Weir weighing in on the other side after a vigorous debate. I'm asking them both to find some common ground here. Mark, where do you think you can agree with Michael? Uh, well, I'll propose some common ground. The, uh, the Church Commission of 2005. Uh, which investigated claims of abuse in, in, in Guantanamo Bay. Their findings were, and let me read this to you, at Guantanamo, where there have been 24,000 interrogation sessions since the beginning of, interroga of interrogation operations, there are only three cases of, of substantiated interrogation-related abuse, all consisting of minor assaults. Michael, will you agree that the men and women in Guantanamo Bay did not torture people, did not abuse detainees, and that they acted in the, in the, uh, upheld the principles of the United States of America? Yeah, Mark, that's an easy one, I mean, because you're opposing a political furphy. I mean, I just wish you'd stop playing political games and trying to score political points, mate. Okay, the, come the on. Bottom hey, line, Michael, no, 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 this Campbell, is the let common me say ground this. part. The bottom line is, at no point do I cast aspersions on anyone who served in, in Guantanamo Bay. I think, Mark, the point of common ground that we have here is that we're both trying to stand up 
for the American military and intelligence community. I do so because I've been in that mud and blood and guts with them. Now, I disagree with you that I think they would take slight from a president who failed to mention them or by referencing Guantanamo policy is discrediting them. Nonetheless, both you and I in our different ways are trying to say that these people are out there doing one of the hardest jobs imaginable and they need and deserve respect. Anyone who faces those bullets in the Arab world deserves credit in my view, Mark. I agree with that 100%. Ah, I love it. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much. You it, was a, it was a great debate. Mark oh, and I hardly Michael. use the word great, Campbell. All right. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Appreciate your time Thanks. tonight. And Cheers, we're going to see right now how you voted in tonight's great debate. 37% agree that President Obama undercut the military.